Hey, how y'all doing out there in YouTube land? This letter coming at you from the Wild Wild West. Well, today, <clears throat> I want to have a discussion on fidgeting and the evolution of lock blade knives for me. And the reason why I carry what I carry and how lock knives have sort of evolved for me in my lifetime through the throughout the years. Now, some of these knives aren't representing aren't from those exact years or whatever, but these are the ones I have now, and these are my favorite ones. And so when I talk about, let's say, um, uh, frame locks, I'm not, and I'm, and I'm talking about when I first got into these types of knives, these knives weren't even made then. These are modern day knives, but the knives I had then, I sold them all. So these are the ones I have now. When I got back into frame locks. <clears throat> And liner locks, well, these are the liner locks I used to carry. <laughs> this one is anyway. And uh, this is my first, this is my first um, Tie Light 6. The blade, the blade is from my first Tie Light 6 anyway. And um, let me see. So, and these represent, this one, these are, these are knives I've never carried up here. These, uh, out all the rest of these knives on this table I have carried. But these, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one have never been carried. This one I carried all the time, and this one I carried all the time, too. And this one's representing the first one I ever had, even though it's the one I carry now. But anyway, let's get into it, into this. And the reason why I have this, this discussion is because I've seen several videos now where people are putting down fidgeting. And I just want to put out my point of view about fidgeting. A lot of people think it's not important. I think it is. And the reason why is that the more you use something and you get used to using something, the more it becomes just second nature and you build up muscle memory for it and you build up the muscle so you can do that and, and use that in whatever way that you want to use it. Because your, your, your body and muscles and hands or whatever and eyes or whatever are so in coordinate or so become so coordinated by doing certain things with your hands or whatever, it becomes second nature. And that's the goal. That's the goal. For any, 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 any uh, tool that you may use, let's say, I'm going to use the word tool. Use any tool that you may use for self-defense or defend yourself, your family, your loved ones, friends, whatever, what have you. Or if you're in the military, any, any, any tool that you're going to use for self-defense or what have you, you need to know how to use it. You don't want to have something and use it for self-defense and not be familiar with it or not know how to use it. And one of the best ways to get known how to use something is to handle it. At least for me, I'm a hands-on person. I do best with things that, like tools. I was a mechanic for a long part, for a large part of my life, in the military and what have you. And um, I, I just like using. I like using tools. And and using using my hands to use tools or whatever. It's sort of second nature to me. Well, it is second nature, I guess. But. Uh, but I think that's an important that's an important quality to have if you're going to use a tool for self defense. You have to know how to handle it, and that's why I always you know believe in you know I love I love hearing that people are doing like Filipino martial arts or whatever you know a different kind of blade arts or whatever or just you know, doing like I what I mostly do is just watch everybody else and then I try to do what they do. You know I'm not I'm not a rich man. I can't afford expensive classes or whatever. You know. And I and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I have disabilities, so I'm not going to be able to move like everybody else anyway. I just try to do the best I can with what I have, with the cards that God's dealt, God's dealt me. So that's why I do. And I know that in order to defend myself because of my disabilities, it's good to have a little help. And that's why I practice with self-defense tools. But I believe that fidgeting is a good thing. It builds muscle memory. And there's a reason why people fidget a lot nowadays, because nowadays we have knives you can fidget with. Now, let's get into this. 
The first knives I fell in love with when I was a young man, a young kid, back in the, well, 60s, okay, <laughs> were the stilettos. Why? Because I remember seeing the movies, uh, like West Side Story, you know, the, what was it, the sharks and the, I, I can't remember, I can't remember. But anyway, the, the, I, I remember seeing movies like that. And, um, and, and, they always, and the tough guys, and the, the, the cool tough guys always had a stiletto. You know what I'm saying? And they pull out the stiletto and it was a switchblade. Well, when I was a kid, I couldn't get switchblades, so I used to get the manual ones. And the first one I got was out of a film stream magazine. It was made in Japan. And for 99 cents, you can get one. And if you spend another, if you spend another penny, you can get two. So for a dollar, you got two, you got two stilettos. And they had like little three inch blades and four inch handles or something like that, like a seven inch stiletto. And that, that was my first stilettos. And I remember sending away for them. I got permission from my family and sent away for them. I think I was like in the second or third grade. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I've always loved stilettos. And my first love of stilettos were the Italian stilettos. This is a Falcon Italian stiletto, Angelo Campolone, AKC. This is the knives that they make. This, this is their manual division. It's, it's called Falcon. That's what this is. I think the wood is called Palisander. And this one has um, uh, nickel, nickel silver bolsters. It's a little bit fancier than just an ordinary one. And the bayonet blade. This one is a German one. But the parts for it, Angelo Coppolone back in the day told me that they made the parts for these. So basically that's the reason why they always look identical. Because these are really parts that are made in Italy and they're sent to Kissing Crane in Germany back when Kissing Crane, I don't know, I know they make these things in, Japan, in Hong Kong or something like, or not in Hong Kong, but in China now. So they're not the same thing no more. This is a German one, this is a real one. They had brass bolsters, solid brass bolsters. Um, this is a, a, a deer stag handles, real deer stag. And this is a 13 inch stiletto. Back lock. But the ones before these were the pick locks. Okay, next up, next up. My next love were the Ratcheting Navajas. My pops gave me one of these in the 70s and, I, and when I went to the military and um, somebody stole out my wall locker, but that was one of my favorite knives because I had it for a little while right before I went into the military. And I had it for about six months while I was in the military and then somebody stole it. Because I used to always play with it and people probably saw it and somebody wanted it, that's what that was. You know, yeah, I fidgeted it with it. Yeah, I did. Because these knives, when they get broken in, this has like about six different locking stops on it. Let me see. Let's count them out. One. So you can't fold it back in. Two. Can't fold it back in. Three. Can't fold it back in. Four. Can't fold it back in. Five. Can't fold it back in. Six. So they call these ratcheting Navajas. And when they, when, they, when they break in, they get loose, you can, you can wrist flick them. And then they have that, like this ratcheting sound. It sounds sort of like this. Isn't that cool? But this one's never been used. This is a collector. I got that, this one to collect. It's a Sparsa, and the blade's made out of 440C. This one, oh, and it has horn handles and um, brass bolsters and liners. This one is an old Scrimshaw Charade Mustang pattern. The pattern that, you know, I guess Steve Austin with Cold Steel claimed that he invented, designed. <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing. I think it's kind of funny. Because <laughs> the oldest one of these I have comes from the 60s. I know they're probably making them before that. I don't even know how old this, this pattern is. I think it's a real old pattern. This is a, this is a charade, um, Screnshaw. Charade and Uncle Henry, they made these. 
And these to me are like the first liner locks. They call them copper locks. And basically what you do, it works just like a liner lock. You push it in and then you fold it in. This is one of the old style lock blade knives. And they always have blade play. So if you ever get one, they always have up and down blade play and side to side too. A little bit of side to side, a little bit of up and down. That was common for old knives, people. The old knives weren't, you know, as technically advanced. I don't think they had the machinery and the, and the, and the, and the, st the, the ability to make things as tightly fit as like they do nowadays. So like when you get an old knife like this, don't expect it to be like, you know, oh, wait a minute, it's got some blade play or it's got some up and down blade play. Don't worry about that. They all got a little bit. <laughs> Most of them all got, you know, especially if you're getting a used one. New ones may not, but they will if you use them. This one right here is a Shat and Morgan. It was like my next love. We're swing guards. They have a whole bunch of different kinds of swing guards, manual swing guards, old ones like this, from different old United States companies, a couple of German companies too. Kissing Crane made these also. And I also have Puma and Boker swing guards. I used to carry a K-Bar swing guard. I have one of those, too. <laughs> but this is a Shatton Morgan. It's like um, Uncle Henry is to um, Charade. Shatton Morgan is to Queen Cutlery. Pretty much. All right. Next up, they evolved into, me for me anyway, Buck knives. And this is one I carried in the 80s. It was a motorcycle knife. That's battery acid from when I had battery problems with my old iron head. Back in the day. The brushes used to always wear out on the generator. And you had to push start it, run it down the street, jump on it, pop it in the gear. But that this was a knife I actually used to carry a lot. I carried it for like 10 years a lot, you know, like a long time. This is another knife that I used to carry all the time because I used to carry Benchmade Bow songs. These were the ones I like to carry the best ones with the titanium handles. Now I just collect them. Don't carry them anymore because I got in trouble and I, and I found out I can't carry them. And the police told me not to, so okay. I don't do it no more. <laughs> then I went from that into liner locks. And the liner lock that I really used to carry all the time was a Benchmade um, AFCK. And that's the one that folded in on my hand. And that's when I stopped carrying liner locks. The only ones I carried, I sold all my liner locks and all my um, frame locks after that. Because I got hurt pretty bad. And so after that, the only liner lock I ever carried were these, the tie lights. They were the only ones I trusted. And because I don't trust little liner locks with little thin, little thin um, pieces of metal, you know, leaf springs or whatever, holding the blade tang, because what happens is either they bend, flex, or they, they, slide off the, they slide off the blade tang. That's how they fail. But this one has a big, wide, folded over blade tang that's actually thick and strong and tempered really good. And when these fail, they fold all the way over and they go into um, fixed blade mode, but they don't fold in on your hand. That's what's important. This blade is from the very first tie light I ever had. It's one that I EDC'd every day. <laughs> it's been polished and re redone and refixed and repaired lots of times. And these handles came off of a, um, a, a tie light that I got for of eBay. And I got it for the purpose I was going to polish these scales out like my other, like 154. But then I got to a point where I got tired of polishing and stuff. So, I mean, sanding and trying to get this, this finish off. Because it's really hard to get the, ED, the electric, electric, electric discharge plating off of these handles. I mean, it's not, it's not like paint. You can't use, like, um, you, it just takes a lot of work. Let me just put there. I won't spend a whole lot of time on that. It takes a lot of work. But I got to this point. I sort of liked it like that because it gave it some sort of a worn look. And this is my first one. So, absolutely love these. Tie Light 6. I've always loved the Tie Light 6. 
This is the one I carry now. If I wanted to carry one. Got the serrated. That's how I evolved. I'm, I'm showing how everything's evolved for me in knives. These, this is the one I carry now. The liner lock I carry now if I carry a liner lock. And these are my three um, favorite frame locks. This one is an Artisan Cutlery RKO. Designed by Dylan Mallory. He's a California designer from California. Titanium handles with um, M390 blade. Absolutely love this knife. Carry this knife a lot. And this is my ZT. I forget what number this is. It's a number. Let me see. Oh, I can't see it, people. My eyes. This glasses. This is zero something. Uh, I'm not going to say it. Y'all probably know what it is. But anyway, it's, it's designed by a Russian, or I'm not sure if he's Russian, but his name is Zinkovich, designer. And I absolutely love this knife. I got a couple of these. This is the one I carry. This one's got a little bit of some wear marks on it. It's got titanium handles, carbon fiber, um, and on this side with a um, 20 CV blade, it's an awesome knife. And these, uh, and back in the day, I didn't carry knives with flippers. And and now I understand, you know, after my accident, I always, whenever I have a liner lock or a frame lock, it's always got to have a flipper for me. Otherwise, I won't want it because a flipper helps save your fingers. And this is one of the ones I like the best. Because look at look how, how that one protects your hand. This will not fold in on you. Even if this lock came undone, it can't fold on you, in on you. This is a um, Lion Steel Maletta um, S S was a SR eleven A. A stands for aluminum. They always also make this in titanium. The titanium was really expensive. This is an expensive knife. It's got Schleppner steel, which is like a, like a sort of like a better grade of D2. And I can't remember what coating they use. I'm going to say it's like a PVD, but I'm not sure. It could be a DLC, but I think it's a PVD. Okay, next up. After I, you know, I got into liner locks and frame locks, and you know, went from back locks to, to um, balisons. And uh, got into these. Next up was for me would be the triad. When the triad lock came out, I didn't want to carry any other knives. The only other knife that I carried were, were the um, only other knife that was a different lock type I carried were the tie lights. I didn't carry any frame locks. I didn't carry any other back locks. I didn't carry any balisongs. I only carried triads. Why? Because this is the king of the locks. You can make a you can make a knife super strong and it doesn't have to be heavy. These are lightweight knives. For me, they're lightweight. You know, four and a half to five and a half ounces to me that's a lightweight knife. I always like to carry large. What you know, most people call large side knives. I like knives with four inch blades the best for my EDC knives. To me, that's like the perfect size for me for EDC. And usually four inch blade knives usually have handles that fit my hands. My hands are a little bit too big for little knives. So I tend not to like little knives. <laughs> but this was another one of my favorites. The towel war. This is my first towel war. And I've been carrying it for ever since he's been made. It's one of my favorite knives to carry when I'm riding the motorcycle. Carry this one in my front right pocket and in my inside my vest or my jacket last times, I'll have this one. Absolutely love them. Then all polished, all all tricked out. Beautiful knives. And one of my favorite all-time knives for work has been this one. The American Lawman. I absolutely love these. It's a large American Lawman. Three and a half inch blade. This one's CTS6HP hologram. I had these 
for since they made it from Oz 8 all the way up to now. Next up would be, oh, here comes Juno. Hey, Juno. Want to say hi? Yes, my sweetie. Yes, my sweetie. Okay. Next up would be. The Recon. Recon 1. I still carry these. One's in my box right now. This was the one that was in my box last year. <laughs> I just finished tricking it out this year, though. Did a video on it. I think you guys probably saw it. Next up would be the Power Lock. After, after I got into those, I got into, like, the, the, uh, you know, started getting into different lock types because... Cold Steel sold out to um, GSM. <clears throat> when they did that, I started trying out different things. I wanted to, tr you know, start trying out different companies because I didn't know what was going to happen to Cold Steel. You know, they're still making, you know, they're still making great knives, but I didn't know what was happening with them, so I started trying out different things. And one knives I, I like to try out were the Spydecos, and this is one of the ones I first tried out was the Chinook. It's the Power Lock. I think this is the last generation of the Chinook. <clears throat> Excuse me, people. Let me get a drink of water here. But I think this is the last generation of the Chinook. I'm not sure. Because I don't know all the you know stuff about spider codes. But it's, a, it's a James A. Keating knife. And he's a, a, a knife fighting instructor. He teaches people how to you know use knives in combat situations. A martial artist, and this is a knife that he designed, and he has techniques built all around these knives, the Chinooks. But it's a very strong lock. The power lock is a very strong lock, and Juno needs to get off the table. I know she wants to say hi, though, huh? You want just you just want to say hi to everybody, huh? Want to get some attention? I'll be done in a minute, sweetie. Come on down. Come on down. Yes, my girl. Yeah, that's my girl. But the Chinook was, was created to compete with the, um, the Andrew Demko um, triad a lot. What you doing, goofy girl? Mm-hmm. Getting Grandpa kisses. That's what you're doing. And then after that, after I tried this one out, I saw a video, a YouTube video of somebody with an EX-01. And I, I, I just had to have this knife. I thought this was too cool for school. Because I knew that the plunge lock was like the type of lock that um, ProTech always used for their autos and stuff. You gotta come down, sweetie. Let, let me finish making the video. And this is when I start really getting to, you know, fidgeting. <laughs> this is like the first knife that I have that, you know, well, next to a ballad song, of course. But this was, was like the first knife that I had that was like a real fidgeter. I mean, straight up from the factory, you, know, you didn't have to really know how to do anything. Just, it was really easy to fidget with. It made opening and closing the knife fun, because you have to put your hand in the way of the path. But then I saw it tested. <clears throat> Excuse me, people. And then I saw it tested. This one, the EX-01. And I can't remember what Andrew Demko tested it against. But he tested against another knife, uh, uh, a triad knife, and this one failed at 180 pounds or 185 or something like that, 180 or something like that. It held 135, and then they put like a, it was 180. And then they put like another 45-pound slab on it and then filled with that slab. Which is, you know, you know, which is still a lot of weight, though, for, you know, a, a weaker Loctite. Because to me, I think of plunge locks as being weaker lock types. After I'd seen that video when that happened, and this was my first one, I was so proud of this knife. And then when I saw that, it made me feel like, ugh. But anyway, I still love the knife. It's a beautiful knife. It's very beautiful. And Hogue makes very strong plunge locks. I think the Hogue's... If you want to get a strong plunge lock, I would get a hog knife. That's my advice. But very beautiful knife. And after that one, I decided I, you know, when I saw the 
the flippers protect your fingers, I decided to try out the X5, and then I, I fell in love with the X5. This is my Harley X5 that I still carry today. And then after that one, I want to try out another plunge lock, and so I went to Brian Time Friends. I got this one, and I have a, also have a, um, a Tonto Blade one like this, and I have the smaller one too. But I absolutely love these. These are like super smooth because I think this was my first knife with bearings. Very beautiful knife. And then after that, I got into the Axis Locks. This is one of my favorite all-time knives right here. But the only thing bad about an Axis Lock is if the lock ever does give out, because you don't have a flipper to protect your fingers, let's see what happens. Ouch, 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 ouch. Nah. That's why I get leery about these kind of knives now. You know, they don't have, they don't have a, any finger protection. So, I evolved. And what did I evolve into? XR lock with flippers. Got finger protection. Got finger protection with this one. It's a beautiful little knife too. This one came straight from Sog, the old Sog company, the original one. <laughs> Absolutely love it. They sent me two because I was having a problem with mine, the first ones that they sent. And so um, they had me send them back and they replaced them with two, two others. Absolutely love it. Beautiful knife. And that has a CTS XHP blade. And you can get these now, go to Midway. Check them out at Midway. They even got the LTE for like a $127, $24 or something like that. And yeah, this one for like 89 bucks. 89 bucks, go check them out if you wanna get one right now on Midway. This is another one of my favorites. Oh man, I love these. I love these. This is one of my absolute favorites. And let me tell you something about this one, people. We gotta just show you something real quick. Look at the handles. I think that's the reason why I love both of these knives so much. They have the exact same handle. You see that? And I don't mean similar, I mean exactly the same. If you put them like this, look where the grip points meet. They're exactly the same. Y'all see that? They're not similar, they're exactly the same. Interesting. <laughs> I wonder who came up with that design first. Because somebody copied somebody. <laughs> and I don't know, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying anything, I'm just pointing out something I've noticed. But I absolutely love these people. Absolutely love these. These are awesome knives. And they're fun to fidget with. I absolutely love them. Absolutely love them. Highly recommend. This one's an S30V one. And that's what, you know, that's what I'm carrying now. This is a new crew wear. Absolutely love them. Beautiful knives. And as you can see, I've gotten used to it already. At first, it, you know, it used to sort of scare me because of slippery scales, but I've gotten used to these scales now. Beautiful knives. Absolutely love it. Crew wear. And this is a very good deal right now. But let me call this part one because I see my battery's fixing right now. I'm going to call this part one. We're going to come back and make part two. Peace. Stiletto. Stay tuned.